Why can't I remember that word? channel this is marissa with life after the fontan and you're tuning in today to the second part of my story of living with congenital heart defects please remember to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications for my page so that way you can be notified whenever i have new videos posted if you have not checked out part one of my story please do so before watching part two so let's get right into things. In the previous video, we ended off with me in the hospital when I was five with pneumonia for my first hospital stay after my surgeries and my last hospital stay until I was 22. After that, I really lived a pretty normal life. I just continued with my regular cardiology follow-ups. Regular follow-ups for any congenital heart disease patients are so very important very very important i'll underline that i'll add some exclamation points we'll make it bigger it's really important other than that though i i really lived a pretty normal life like i mentioned i played a lot of sports the main one being soccer i also played softball i was a cheerleader i took dance classes and i took ice skating lessons with some of my best friends. I actually had dreams of becoming a professional soccer player, playing soccer in college, going on to play soccer. And I think that's because soccer kind of runs in my blood on my dad's side of the family. Now my grandfather played in the Olympics and the World Cup for the United States. He was always number 10 and I was always number 10. So that, that was my plan. I was going to play soccer like my grandpa Ruben. Here he is. <laughs> so I was going to play soccer like my grandpa Ruben. But then at the beginning of middle school, so I don't know, maybe I was 11, I began having issues with keeping up with my teammates. I was becoming short of breath and having trouble breathing while running up and down the soccer field. So this prompted my very first exercise stress test. You could ask me on any given day, and I will always say that exercise stress tests still are my least favorite cardiac diagnostic exam that I've ever done. Sorry, Dr. Madon and Lisa. <laughs> so with this first stress test, I rode a bike. There's a thing in your mouth. There's a clip on your nose. You have heart monitor leads, a blood pressure cuff an EKG, all kinds of things that are monitoring you while you're doing this workout. And with the bike, every three minutes, I believe, the resistance for your pedaling increases and increases and increases. And there's a certain parameter you have to stay between. I've since graduated to the treadmill, which looks very similar, except instead of the resistance, of the pedaling increasing it's actually the the elevation gain which continues to increase every three minutes as well as the speed for the miles per hour after this very first stress test again on the bike i learned that i was unable to participate in strenuous sports including soccer now i had already stopped playing softball i wasn't a dancer anymore i was not a cheerleader and I'm not really sure if I was still taking ice skating lessons, though I was allowed to stay in that regardless. This was really challenging for me. I was just about to start school in middle school. The majority of my friends were all my teammates on my soccer team. So going into a new school off of the team that I've been on forever without anything to do when I got home from school, it was an adjustment for somebody especially as young as I was. So instead of sitting at home doing nothing but homework after school, I joined the show choir in my middle school. I began taking piano lessons, I signed up to be in chorus, and I stuck with that. I still play the piano. I was in chorus and show choir or musical theater, however you call it, through 
high school and music is something still so important to me today. I love Broadway shows. I don't know what I would have done if I had not turned to music. I would have been bored to say the least, but I also wouldn't have the amazing friends and support system that I do today. In middle school, I was given a pass or accommodation or however you want to word it to have a copy of my textbooks kept in the classroom and a copy of my textbooks to stay at home. So that way I did not have to carry a million textbooks through the halls, back and forth to class, on and off the bus every day. Other than that, I also had some limitations in gym class. A lot of times I was the one grading papers and timing my friends on the mile run as opposed to actually participating in it. Something I heard a lot when these restrictions first came about was that I was really lucky to not have to run the mile run. I don't really think my classmates knew what they were saying with that. I don't like running. I don't love exercising, but I do to the best of my ability to keep my heart healthy. But I would any day rather participate in the mile run than have this lifelong congenital heart condition. So I think that that experience was probably one of the first times in my life that I really felt very different from my peers and my friends. So fast forward through middle school, I'm doing all the shows, I'm loving the music, things are great. I didn't really have any crazy cardiac things happen at that time. I believe starting my sophomore year of high school, I actually volunteered to be a manager for our boys varsity high school team, just so that way I could still remain involved in the sport that I loved so much. And that was really awesome to again be a part of a team. No, I wasn't playing, but I was still involved with soccer and I was still with the sport that I loved and I was doing it safely. I was taking part in soccer in a safe manner for my heart. I would say some big things did start arising around the age of 17 where I actually passed out one time um, in the middle of the night. I think it was senior year of high school. And that led to a 30 day halter monitor, which I wore. I'm actually wearing a halter monitor now. You can kind of see the outline right here. There will be a video of that in a month or so once I finish wearing this. This is a 30 day halter monitor and the one I'm referring to from senior year of high school was also a 30 day halter monitor. And it was a rough experience. It was the most prominent halter monitor I've ever worn. And it was also the longest duration to wear a halter monitor before. For those 30 days, each day I went to school, I wore a sweatshirt just because I didn't want my friends to see. The very first day that I wore that monitor to school, I was sitting in my English or language arts, whatever we called it then, classroom. And there's the monitor and then there was a little sensor transmit that I carried around in my book bag and it wouldn't stop beeping. I don't know why it was beeping, but it was so humiliating to me because everyone's looking around the room and they know it's not a cell phone. So what is that going off? So I spent most of the day in the nurse's office on the phone with my mom saying, I don't want to wear this. I don't want everyone to see it. I don't want to wear it. I can't do it. And then I did. I wore it. I kept it on for the 30 days. Did I wear sweatshirts every day? Yes. That was also a really difficult time because it was just a few months after my boyfriend and I had started dating. I mean, even just giving me a hug, you could feel the box that was on my chest and this one had three leads, so the wires and the stickers and you could feel it just with a hug. And it was something that I wasn't really ready to introduce him to at the time, but I had no choice because I had to wear it, so I had to feel ready. And eventually by the end of the 30 days, I remember it not being as big of a deal as it seemed at the beginning. After I graduated high school, I was ready to go to nursing school. I was enjoying my summer and I actually had to have a cardiac cath in 
I think the month of July after I graduated. Now this is really a big turning point in my life with congenital heart disease because it's the first procedure that I have any memory of. It's the first procedure where I remember waking up from the sedation, where I was intubated, all of those things. The procedure itself wasn't terribly difficult. The recovery wasn't difficult. The anesthesia made me feel sick for a few days, but it was really just a big deal that I was 18 and this was the first big cardiac thing that I could remember throughout my whole life. After that, they decided to have me come back just about two weeks later for an implanted loop recorder or a link recorder. I'll definitely have a video discussing this more, but it's something that's implanted right next to my sternum. And it's a little monitor similar to the halter monitor, but it's internal that really records my heart's electrical rhythm. It has some parameters set where if it ventures out of that into something more dangerous, it will alert my cardiologist. For instance, if my heart rate is too high for too long, too low for too long, if I have some weird ectopic beats or um, palpitations. I had that placed in my chest 11 days before moving into college. And similar to the halter monitor, this was also challenging. The biggest roadblock in college for me was actually, I believe, either my junior or senior year where I was diagnosed with an immunodeficiency called T-cell lymphopenia, which they related directly to my Fontan. I'll talk all about that in my video discussing my journey to become a nurse because it's a pretty in-depth story. Basically, it puts me at higher risks of contracting fungal and skin infections. I don't really see many impacts from it at all, but we'll talk all about that in my journey to becoming a nurse. I graduated college. I got a job as a nurse. I had my loop recorder replaced. Like I mentioned, I was hospitalized when I was 22 for a non-cardiac related issue. And then I've been hospitalized twice this month. Um, and we'll definitely get more into those in the future. So that, that's really my big story of living with congenital heart defects. I'm now a huge advocate for the congenital heart disease community. I'm a heart to heart ambassador with the Adult Congenital Heart Association. I attend their heart walks. I go around and I speak about transitioning from pediatric to adult congenital heart disease care. I love what I do. I am a pediatric cardiac nurse. I could not think of a better field to be working in. It, it is so perfect for me in every way. Well, thank you so much for watching. Keep your eyes peeled to see my next video discussing my heart anatomy, my actual surgeries and what went on with them, my six congenital heart defects, and a little bit about fetal circulation. Thanks for tuning in and have a great day.